Welcome to this podcast on how to use YouTube and other various online platforms to sell or promote your service. My name is Andrew McAllister. I'm a consultant at Full Circle Management Solutions in Belfast. I hope you'll enjoy the podcast. It's going to be about 40 minutes in length. So let's get started. Okay, so let's begin. I'm going to start by giving you a brief overview of what we're going to be discussing today. So what are the options? Um, the pros and cons of videos, the platform options, and then tips. And then the same again for live streaming, the pros and cons, the platform options, and the tips. How to monetize your content. And then finally, I'm going to do a couple of little demonstrations of how I would edit videos and a few tips on that. So I'm going to start off by telling you a few interesting facts about um, video and online content. Viewers retain 95% of a message when they watch it in a video compared to 10% when reading it in text. 51% of marketing professionals worldwide have named video as the, as the type of content with the best return on investment. And then finally, 72 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every 60 seconds. So that really just shows how powerful video is and how essential it really is for your business. So what are the options? There's two main options. Option one is to pre-record your offering and post it on a platform such as YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram TV. Option two is live streaming, which is to hold a live streaming event for your customers and using platforms such as Zoom or Facebook Live to interact live with your customers. So I'm gonna talk now about a few of the pros of using video. So obviously you have time to edit your video. Um, you can take out any errors, you can add music, visual effects, whatever you want to make the video more professional overall, which can't be done with live streaming. Once your video is on YouTube or Instagram, um, it can expand outside of your audience group and can be seen by a much wider audience, especially if it's something unique or specific to your business or your area you live in. That can work really well. Um, and then there's less chance of things going wrong. You know, if you're doing a video, it doesn't matter if your Wi-Fi cuts off or your lap laptop battery dies, you can go back and finish it later on. You can cut out bits when you say words wrong. Um, so there's less, less chance of things going wrong. Uh, your customers can watch it in their own time. So they don't need to be on their phones or on their laptops the same time as you. Uh, so now let's talk about a few of the cons of using video. So um, using a pre-recorded video, it's less interactive and personal than having a live stream with your customers or a video conference. Um, you don't have the options to interact with your participants who are watching. You can't answer the questions, you can't hear the feedback. Another thing is that videos um, give participants the option to pause and resume whenever they wish. And that may mean that a majority of your customers don't actually come back to finish your, your yoga workout or watch your you know, um, workshop on marketing, whatever it is you're offering. Um, and then obviously editing the video is going to take longer and it is a skill. Um, you need to sit down and learn how to use some of the video software editing apps. Um, however, there's loads of free ones out there and I'm going to show you a couple at the end of this tutorial. So to make sure you stay tuned. So which platforms to use? Obviously the main one that everyone knows is YouTube. It's the most popular video sharing platform in the world. Um, over 2 billion users use it. Um, it's most popular with uh, 25 to 34 year old age groups. However, it, it has expanded recently in the last few months um, due to coronavirus, people working from home, people wanting to teach themselves and learn new things online. Um, Obviously it's free to use, but there is the option to pay for advertising if you want. Um, and when you sign up, you'll be able to create your own channel for your business, which is kind of like a Facebook business page. You can have your cover photo, you can have your information, your contact information, um, your link to your website. So it's great in that way. So a couple of tips then for YouTube. Um, reports have shown that YouTube channels that post more than once a week get much better performing videos and more recommended views. Um, so it really is important to stay active on it. I would recommend if you can get one up a week 
or instead of posting one long, maybe 10 minute video, cut it down to maybe three or four minutes and then post, post three up over the space of three weeks. It just means if you're running out of content ideas, you still have enough videos going up there. In terms of quality then, you don't need to be producing Oscar worthy videos. However, you do need the basics. So you need HD footage filmed horizontally. Um, you need clear sound and concise, entertaining or informative videos. So cut out, you know, the babble or long pauses. Okay, so another tip would be to develop your video as a series. Um, and there's actually a section on YouTube when you upload your video, you can add it to a playlist, which means when someone's watching your video and it finishes, it'll automatically recommend the next video of yours, which is great because once you've got someone watching one video, you don't want to lose them. So if you can offer it as a series, people usually get hooked in and they could end up binge watching it and maybe watch three or four of your videos, you know, in one afternoon. There's a much better chance then of retaining them as a customer. So in terms of keywords then, um, keywords are very important when you're naming your video. That's how people are going to find it along with the suggestions. So make sure you have your keywords in there. So yeah, as you can see here, um, I've put a good example and a bad example. The good example, um, yoga for complete beginners, 20 minute home workout. It tells people what it is. It's got yoga in it. It tells them it's for beginners. It tells them how long it's going to last. And then it tells you where you can do it so you can do it at your home. The bad example below, they're assuming that people know that it's going to be about you, uh, yoga and they're assuming people know how long it's going to last and they're assuming people know, you know what intermediate to advanced means. That could be anything, that could be karate, you know. So you need to really make it clear in your title. In terms of thumbnails then, thumbnails I think are the single most important thing when uploading your YouTube video and it's, a lot, it's something that a lot of people actually overlook. So I really think they can make or break your success on YouTube. If you have a look at these examples here that I screenshotted, you can see this guy with the green backdrop. He's kept consistent with it. He's kept the green throughout. He's clearly wrote what each video was offering on the thumbnail. He's got a picture of him smiling, whatever. It's going to entice you in. Same with the yoga girl. You know, she's got all her different colors. She's got the text in big bold lettering. And then she's got a cut out of her doing one of the poses. So it's going to catch your eye when you're scrolling through the millions of videos online. The reason this is so important is that suggested videos are actually the leading source of organic traffic on YouTube. So as someone is watching one of your videos on YouTube, they'll see down the right hand sidebar that it suggests YouTube suggesting them other videos to watch. So if your video is in that suggested area and you don't have a captivating thumbnail, people aren't going to click on it. They're just going to scroll right through and click on the next one. So a few tips for this then, keep it consistent, the same look, same feel, choose your brand colors, choose your logo, choose your font and stick with that. Don't make it clickbait. Um, so what I mean by that is don't Photoshop yourself on a beach, you know, in Bali or somewhere. And then when people click into it, it's you doing yoga on, in your living room. People are going to get annoyed with that and they're going to actually click the dislike button or unsubscribe from you or report it. So definitely don't do that. Um, Again, then make the viewers want to learn more. So you can see this example here. I've said, hi, I left my full-time job. Um, you want to click in and see this video. The, the thumbnail is her with a glass of wine, thumbs up, saying I quit. So you want to know why she quit, how she's getting on now, and how she's making money, that type of thing. So it's going to really entice you in. So think of that as well when you're titling it and when you're choosing your thumbnail. This is your opportunity now to pause the video. And if you want to do this task, you can. If you don't, you can just keep watching it. I want you to write down what's good about the good example, so the 10 minute yoga for beginners, and then write down what's, what's bad about the bad example, and then see if you can match the ones that I've, I've noticed. Okay, so now I'm going to do a quick demonstration on YouTube. Um, how to create a thumbnail, how to upload it to YouTube, how to create it a series, and then how to share it and promote it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create your thumbnail. So there's a really good website called canva.com. So it's free to use and it's great for creating social media posts, flyers, menus. So you can see here they've got loads of different templates. 
um, Facebook posts, Facebook covers, um, and then obviously YouTube thumbnail. So you can either click there or you can go up here and you can type in YouTube thumbnail. Now, it's going to give you a load of templates that you can use or you can build your own from scratch. So for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm going to build one from scratch. So I'm going to click on blank. It then opens up a blank template in the exact size that you need for a YouTube tutorial or a YouTube thumbnail. You're then going to want to get your video and take a screenshot from it. So I am going to go to my picture and find a video. So, so for the purpose of this, I'll click on this video. I will mute it, press play, and then you're going to move it along till you find a section of the video that you want to use for your thumbnail. So let's say for example I want to, to use this. I will pause it on that and then crop it down a little bit. I will then take a screenshot and then open up your screenshot. You can crop it in so it's just the thumbnail of the video. So that's done. And then you can go back to Canva. You can go down to upload, upload and image, and find your screenshots. Open it up, and then when it's uploading on Canva, you can drag it across. It fills the whole screen. Now, this was a cinematic video, so it has the black bar above and below. But if you wanted to fill the whole thing, it's just a case of clicking on the corner, dragging it up. So you can then press done. Um, you can then Go to your text, add your heading, click add heading, drag it over to wherever you want in the video. So this was filmed up in the north coast, so I just write north coast. And then you might want to add in a sub subheading. And so let's let's pretend it was top ten blocks. And then you may want to add your logo. So make sure that your, your logo is a PNG version. I'll use the full circle logo for the purpose of this. You can drag it over and it's a PNG, which means it has no background and no box around it. You can then drag it and position it to whatever corner you want to put it on or in the middle. So for the purpose of this, I'll put it here. I then click up and down node. Download it as a PNG. And that's it, that's your thumbnail created. So, like I said, bear in mind your colors and your theme. So, if I was doing it for full circle, you, know, you might want to put in circle and orange. You might want to click on element, drag in a circle. Click up here and then you can change the color of it and find either click on an orange color or find your exact orange color. You can type the code in here and it will match up exactly. And you can play on that. Things like things like this will make it more and then things like this will make it an overall stronger and more consistent thumbnail when people are viewing all your videos in one go. So once you've got your thumbnail, you can go back to YouTube. You're then going to want to head over to YouTube. You're going to want to sign in or sign up if you haven't already. Click on sign in, click on your email, click on your password. Okay. 
from your sign then you can then click on this plus symbol up in the corner to add a video click on upload video and uh, select your file And then whilst it's uploading, you can again just type in your keywords and your title. So it's already done it here. So top 10 walks in Northern Ireland and at North Coast. Um, and then in your description, you're going to want to put in your keywords, location, length, and then maybe follow us with your Instagram links or your Facebook links, website, whatever you think is relevant. Uh, your thumbnail then, if I delete it and show you. Right. Okay. So this is where you'd add your thumbnail, click on it, give your downloads, find your thumbnail that you just created in Canada, click upload, and then pop in here. Um, this is then when you can select your playlist, so it will probably be new playlist, this one with walks, I'm going to name it walks. Public, unless you're charging people and you want to keep it private or unlisted and then you have to share the link with them so this one will just keep public or create and then I have to check the box box and then add to the walk playlist it then means when you add any videos in the future and check walks they all add to the same playlist and it's easier for your customer and your viewers to keep track of them all is it for kids so this one isn't so I'll click no Age restrictions, it's fine, you can leave all that blank unless it's, it is age restricted. Uh, we then continue. Move that, continue. Visibility then, do you want to publish it now? Or do you want to schedule it to go live later on? This is good if you're going away on holiday or you're busy over the next couple of weeks and you want to just get it all done on the spot and just schedule three or four videos for the next month. You would then have to look at it, it'll just go up live automatically. And then that's it really, you press save um, and it will go live within a few minutes. I'll do that, cancel it. It'll then appear in here, you can go in and you can have a look and see how many viewers you've got, the comments, if anyone's liked it. Um, and then in terms of sharing it then, so once you've posted it, you can click the three dots beside it. You can create shareable link. It then copies the link. You can then share that on your Facebook page, Instagram, and WhatsApp groups, wherever you want. And that's the link straight to that video. All right, so let's head back to the PowerPoint presentation now. Um, I'm gonna to touch on Facebook. Obviously, I'm sure most of you know Facebook is one of the biggest social media networking platforms in the world. 2.45 billion users, more than 80 million businesses around the world use it and have a Facebook business page. 65% of the users are under the age of 35. So a few tips then for posting videos on YouTube. Educate your audience. An effective type of video that works great on YouTube or that works great on Facebook is when you give people tips or teach them something, something useful that they're going to find beneficial. Don't waste time. Um, when it comes to Facebook videos, it's quite different to YouTube. You know, they haven't come on to search for your video. They're finding it by chance, by scrolling down through their feed. So you need to get to the point straight away let them know what it is you're offering, why they should stop and why they should listen and watch the video. Don't create long drawn out introductions. Don't babble on, just get to the point. Captions then, this is something that's very important for Facebook. Um, as I mentioned, it's very different from YouTube and people are usually on it while they're out and about or on the go, they're active. Therefore, they may not always be listening to the audio they may just be watching it. So according to statistics, 85% of users on Facebook actually watch video without the audio on. So 
you really do need captions. It's going to help people understand your video a lot better. Um, and it will help to decrease the chance of losing the user if they can't understand the video without sound. Um, tagging other people. So if this is relevant, don't do it if you're just doing it for the sake of doing it. But if you've worked with a business or a brand or another person, tag them in the video. It's going to help get your video out to more people, get wider reach, more engagement. It's definitely worth doing. Okay, so Instagram, again, it's massive, 500 million users worldwide. Um, 400 million people use it every day and look at the stories. Uh, its most active age range is 18 to 34 and 34 to 44, so slightly younger than Facebook. Average Instagram user spends 53 minutes a day on the app, which doesn't seem like a long time, but if you sat there and counted it, it is quite a long time. Couple of tips then for Instagram. So video length, no. So video length, um, depending on where you're gonna post the video, it will affect the length of the video. So if it's a 60 second video, up to 60, so if it's up to 60 seconds long, you can just post it as a regular post on your feed. If it's up to 15 seconds long, you can do it as an Instagram story. Anything longer than a minute, but shorter than 10 minutes, you can do on Instagram TV, which then can also be shown on your story, but they only see the first one minute and then they have to click a link to watch the full version. Um, anything longer than 10 minutes would have to just be an Instagram live stream video. So um, it has been proven that short, concise videos work better on Instagram. People don't have a long attention span on Instagram. They're scrolling through. They want to get as much information as they can, see it and move on. So I would recommend instead of doing, say, one five minute video, which would work great on YouTube, maybe try to split it into five one minute videos if possible. Format then, format really matters on Instagram. Um, Instagram is built for mobile only, so you should be filming it vertically. Um, so keep that in mind when you're filming your footage. Don't assume that the viewers will turn their phone around or view it horizontally, the majority of them won't. So it's better to shoot vertically or edit the horizontal footage to be vertical. Um, again, subtitles and captions are very important on Instagram. 85% watch it without the sound on. Instagram TV actually allows you to add subtitles to your video with the vast majority of people consuming content on mute. Uh, more and more people are consuming content on the go, similar to Facebook, so it's always better to make your content user-friendly. So in terms of live streaming, then what are the live streaming options? Zoom, obviously it's expanded massive in the last couple of weeks. Everyone's using it now, especially people working from home, businesses working to collaborate. It's a um, remote service that combines video conferencing, online meetings, chat and video collaboration. Like I said, over 2 million people have downloaded it since the beginning of March. Um, it offers free video conferencing up to 100 participants with a 40 minute time limit. Um, if you want to hold calls longer than 40 minutes, you'll need to pay 12 pound a month. So the pros and cons then, a couple of the pros of Zoom are like you can have, or that you can have classes up to 100 participants. You can record classes and upload them to Facebook, YouTube, etc. afterwards. So if any of your clients couldn't attend the live class, they can still go on and rewatch it in their own time. Uh, there's a personal touch as you can see all the participants, if they have a webcam. You can have a two-way conversation with participants and the participants with each other. So it's friendly, it's interactive, it's good for networking. A couple of the cons then, um, it's £12 per month if you want to use it longer than 40 minutes a day. You have to send an invite for each participant, therefore you will need to know their email or their telephone number. Participants may need training prior to know how to work Zoom. You know, they may need to know how to use their webcam, how to use the microphone, so that can be a hassle. Facebook Live then, so um, Facebook Live is a feature on Facebook that uses the camera on a computer or your mobile device to broadcast real lifetime video to Facebook. 
2019, over 2 billion people watched a Facebook Live. Facebook Live videos produce six times as many interactions as traditional videos. And it gets 10 times more comments than a regular video. So it just goes to show, you know, don't overlook it. Same with um, people, users watch Facebook Live videos three times longer than a pre-uploaded video. So a couple of pros and cons then for Facebook Live. Um, it's open to everyone. It's free. It's unlimited number of viewers. You can save the live stream and keep it on your timeline. And viewers can write through the stream. Write comments. The cons then, you can't see the viewer's webcam, so you don't know who's attending. It's less personal, so it's only one way, apart from the comments. It doesn't give participants the same feeling of being there with you in the class. And finally, participants will need a Facebook account to view the live stream. So now I'm going to touch on how to charge for your videos. So three options then for video charging. Option one, upload the video to YouTube, set them as a private playlist or unlisted. This will then allow you to share the direct link with your paying customers. Pretty simple. Get you complete control over who views your videos. Keep your members happy because they're feeling they're getting something exclusive. It's a win-win. Option two would be to upload the video to your website, to either a hidden page or a password protected page. Again, this will allow only the members who have the access, quite similar to the YouTube um, playlist. Option three then would be to charge a set fee per video. So upload them to your website and allow customers to add them to the cart and pay a one-off fee to download the video. Um, option two and three are good as they keep your members on your website. So it gives you the chance to upsell other services and products once they're there. In terms of live streaming then, so live streaming, if done correctly, can be a very lucrative way to charge for your service. Creating a live streaming event and selling tickets to it via a platform like Eventbrite. It also is a great way to give people a taster session before they commit to buying your video or becoming a member. So maybe you do a little free kind of 15, half an hour taster session live on Eventbrite or on Zoom and let people see what it is you're offering before they commit to paying. Make sure you give yourself at least a week to promote it and market the tickets. And then bear in mind that with so much free content online, you really do need to price conservatively and offer something different from the standard video. So for example, the interactive elements work really great. If you can get the customer engaged with you whilst they're watching it, they feel more part, part of it, like they're at a live event, a real event. So then finally, one-to-one -one sessions. Um, these are a great option if you're offering something like a more bespoke or personal service. So such as therapy, personal training, dietary advice. Uh, there's, no right or way, there's no right or wrong way to do this. However, I would recommend doing it via Zoom, Skype or FaceTime. Either charging per hour or per session. Additionally, you can then still be doing YouTube and other things on the side to offer taster sessions or remind people what it is that you do. So now editing, in terms of editing, um, there's a number of different free softwares out there. If you just Google top 10 best software, video editing software, it comes up with loads of websites that can recommend one. I personally use iMovie. Um, you can get it on your iPhone, on the App Store. You can get it if you have a MacBook, you can use it on that. Um, PC, Movie Maker is a good option too, it was, it's always been reliable and it's free. Um, and then obviously in your editing application you can trim the end of it, you can add in clips, you can add transitions, you can add your voice over the top, loads of different things you can do and you can also add music. So in terms of music, music really will enhance your video, it's great to add it in, however it must be an open source. So what that means is that it needs to be copyright free or royalty free. There's a number of good websites that you can get these tracks from. Um, Bensound.com is a really good one. It has loads of good um, simple backing tracks that you can use 
when you're speaking over the top and you just want some music in the background. However, bear in mind, if you are going to start charging for your content, so you're going to pay per video, you might need to look into that because you might need to, you know, pay a commercial license to use that song. All right, so I am going to show you how I would edit a video using iMovie. So when you open up iMovie, you'll start a new project. It'll look like this. You'll be able to see down the side, this will be your library. So you'll be able to go in, find all of your different videos, either off your memory card or straight off your computer. Then you open up here and you can drag them down onto the timeline and then over on this section on the right hand side is where you can view the video. I'll just move. Okay, so once you've got it open um, and you found your library of footage you want to use, you can click on the one that you want to use, hold it down, drag it onto the timeline, and that'll be it. You can see 20 seconds long. If I want to shorten it, I can click on either side and pull them in, like so. That will shrink it. Or I can do Command B and Command B again. That will split the clip. So I split it into three clips. I can then choose which section I want to keep. So let's say I only want this section. I can click on that one. Backspace, it's going to delete it. And then go along, find another clip I like. Let's see, so say we like this clip. Drag it down. Find the shot, move my way along until I find the shot I want. Command B, just slip it, to snip it. Delete it, and then do the same thing again, and delete. You can see now it'll play from here to there. So, that's what I would just call a standard cut, or just cut straight to the next one. It's quite hard, it's quite harsh. If you wanted to add a transition in, you can click up here on transition. There's loads of different free ones. Um, you can download other ones and install them, but you will probably be glad for these ones. So, crossbar is quite a nice one. If you click on it and you drag it in between both of the clips, if I then play it, you can see it's cross board into the next clip, which is a bit nicer and it's not so harsh. And then let me add in another clip and I can show you. Add in this one. And I'll move it. Again, it's quite harsh. I will cut it. I want to go to transitions. And then fade to black is quite nice, fade to white. You add it in, it'll fade like that. So you can also click on the transition and change the speed of it. So if I double click on it, I can say three seconds. It's now made a three seconds transition. So when I play it, you'll see it's a lot slower, it's fading out and fading in, which is nice. Really depends on the style of video you're going for. So how um, iMovie works and how a lot of the other software works, work, will work is that they are in layers. So you're going to want to layer everything over the top and anything that's on the, the highest layer is the thing that will be seen. If I was to take this clip here and drag it on top of this clip, it's then going to play like this and it's going to start showing. Oh, I should make that. It's going to start showing this clip over the top of that one, and then when it ends, it'll go back to that one. So this is good when you're doing, say, interviews, for example. So if I was to then, say, take this audio clip up here of someone speaking, I can pull it down underneath the clips, press play. You can hear the voice speaking, and we find it a better section of it. You hear the, the voice speaking, you still see the clip. And then you can add in the music, you can add in whatever else you want. So that'll be an audio. Like I said, you need to use copyright free music so you can download it yourself and install it here. Or they do have a range of free 
song already built in on iMovie. So if I wanted to say use this um, simple one, you can click on it, play it, that's what I want. I can click on it. You're then going to want to drag it below your audio of your voice. It goes down below. You're then usually with backing vocals, you're going to want to bring them down with backing tracks, bring it down to maybe 20%. It's very subtle, so you can still hear the voice and you hear the music. So if I play that now, you can hear that music's still too loud, so bring it down to 10%. Recently attending another council sporting event. Still hear the voice clearly, and then you just hear the music very slowly in the background with the clips playing over the top. And I can drag these clips, layer them however I want um, for the desired effect. In terms of other things, then, that you may need to know for iMovie or editing your videos, uh, it would be titles. If I was to click up here in titles, say for example, I want to. A name one, I would maybe click on this, drag it down to the section I want. It's going to then pop up here. I can then put in the person's name if it was saying interview, put it in there, and the subtitle, maybe the company name. It will then play like that. You can then, it automatically goes in the four seconds. You can either have it shown up for longer or less time or the whole video if you want. If you want the whole video, you just have to drag it along the whole way. Um, also, I mean, titles at the start, you may want to add a title in right back at the start, which will play like that, with no background, or if you want, again, you can add it on to me, like so, and it'll play over the top. So, depending on what you want, I mean, if I was to open up one of my old projects that I've done, and I can show you how it looks, so I'll open up this one and show you. You can see the different layers here. So there's quite a lot of audio layers because I was adding in. You know, so this is the piano music. This is the lick. So I wanted to add in ripples, water. Um, usually when you're filming something outdoors, there's a lot of wind and noise and stuff. So the footage won't be that good. The audio won't be very strong on it. So you may want to add in clips pre-recorded or clips that you downloaded online. So for example, this one, it's a sealable clip that I find online. I was able to download the, the audio and then play it over my video. I don't know if you can hear that, but just different sound effects. Like this one, you know, the water rippling. And then this is where the music comes in. So this is kind of getting a bit complicated, but if you do want to layer, you can have as many layers as you need. And at the end of the video, then. Top. I've kept them all quite simple, quite short. I try to keep them all at the same time so it doesn't be not one long clip and then one short clip. And then you'll see the transition now. It fades out, fades out to the next shot. Really slow motion. And again, then if you wanted to speed this up, I can click on the clip. I can go up to this dial up here. I can click on speed. And then I can click slow, fast, custom. If I want it to fast, I can click times by two, times by four, times by eight, and it will be four times the speed. Now, when I play that, it's a lot quicker, or I can set it back to normal and it will be slow motion. So it's really just a case of playing around. Like you see there, I, I've got hundreds of clips all kind of merged together to make one video. Then once you're happy enough with your video, you can go up here and share it and export it and choose the file and choose how big you want it to be. Do you want it to be 4K, HD? Obviously, depending on how you filmed it. If your camera does HD, then I would recommend selecting the highest quality because it's going to be the best for YouTube. And then click Next, and that will save it to your laptop, and then you can upload it on to YouTube. So that is the end of the podcast. I hope that you find it informative and thanks for your time.